Well, hi, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your project? Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Eddie. Uh, I work for Novartis Institute for Biomedical Research, which is a research arm for Novartis. So we do early stage drug discovery. Um, to me, drug discovery is a fascinating problem because it's fundamentally important and it's fundamentally difficult. It literally takes decades to put some one thing into you know into users' hands, and it's also fundamentally changed in the past like two decades or something because of the introduction of a computational method. And um, here we actually show a, a, a all the steps, um, not, not any of the steps in, involved in drug discovery process. And you can see that many of, almost all the steps now has been changed because of the introduction of computational methods. In Novartis, we actually use Python a lot in most of the steps um, because we use um, Python for um, small molecule mining, basically finding uh, features of molecules and also doing machine learning, prediction, that kind of stuff. We also use Python for scripting um, because we have lots of you know, components we want to script in it and we also want to combine them together using Python as a glue. We also use Python to build some of the infrastructures um, for web services and stuff like that. And we use Python a lot for building web applications and you know, web-based tools and stuff like that. For ours, the Python has lots of advantages. So um, at the top of my mind, it's like Python is very, very approachable. We support scientists, which are not you know, computer scientists by training. They are scientists you know, like chemists and biologists, but they can actually look at our Python code and making small changes. That's a huge advantage to us. And the second advantage is that Python is elegant. It basically makes us you know, happy just to code in Python and read other people's code. And uh, the ecosystem is just perfect. You have support for all kinds of stuff, from you know scientific computing, uh, web applications. You know, um, you're building basic infrastructure like deployment tools, and it's just perfect. Um, this ecosystem, and it's very flexible because in our application, performance is a very critical problem. But also, we want things to you know to we want to code making things very fast. Um, so code time is also very important. So we all often start with Python to build prototypes, and then if we identify you know, you know, performance critical components, we rewrite them in C, and we don't need to touch any other part of the program. It's just perfect for, for this kind of you know, iterative, you know, progressive um, uh, approach. And as an, an one of the examples, I'll go through this very quickly, it's basically the pharmacophore tool we built. Um, so this is a pharmacophore tool. Pharmacophore is essentially a, a pattern that uh, a macromolecule, like a protein in your body, can recognize, and then you know making changes to their behavior. That's how drug works. And we need to do pharmacophore discovery. So pharmacophore, um, from a computer science point of view, is essentially a, a graph pattern. So we actually do all the hardcore computation in Python. We do uh, you know finding graph features in Python. We do um, you know we represent these graph features in Python, and we do machine learning on graph in Python, and we also do. We build a search engine for these features using Python as well, so which can search millions of compounds in you know below zero, uh, below uh, half a second, something like that. And uh, at the end of the day, you want this tool to be used by scientists. So we build web applications for uh, using Python as well. We build uh, RESTful services using Python, and actually our deployment system is based on Python as well. So um, pretty much build the whole thing, you know, maybe 80% of it in pure Python. And we find that Python is just perfect for, for our application for multiple reasons. It's versatility because it can do all kinds of stuff uh, in Python. It has support for full stack from, you know, it can talk into browsers on one side. It can talk to, you know, a low level C code on the other side. And, and it can fit in modern architecture like we do RESTful services. We, ha we still have SOAP. So Python has no problem to talk into, you know, both of them. <coughs> and we tap, you know, C and C++ go for extra performance, which is very easy. And uh, this, you know, progressive development cycle is actually very critical to our application. So we find Py Python are very useful for our applications. I'm sure you agree with me <laughs> in that regard. And that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much.